Here's a mechanical calculator from the 50s and 60s. In fact, these were used right up until the 1970s. There's no electronics, there's no electric motors, processors, or any power whatsoever. It's all 100% mechanical. And they're absolute beautiful machines. They're not made of plastic, they're solid metal. Uh, they weigh around five or six kilos, so they're very heavy, um, but very ingenious in design. If you've never used one of these before, I'm gonna go through the four basic calculations you often wanna do, which would be division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. And this can handle all of that. Now, if we have a look at the design, uh, you have here the setting register. This is where you've got little levers that you can grab and spin round these dials, and it sets a number up here. Now, this is known as the settings register, or window display. Here you have a little lever that if I pull it up, it can reset all of these and it sets them all back to zero. Down here is what's referred to as the results register, the, the results window. This is where your results are normally displayed. Over on the left of this carriage is the rotation or revolution counter or counter register and this shows you how many times you've actually turned the crank of the machine around. All of this carriage can move left and right. You have either a, a lever at the front or to make it convenient when using this they also on some models put a lever on the side here. These two levers here clear both the counter and the result. So I can clear this one and this one. Now, although you may have seen other models, they all work on a very similar basis. This one here, I can demonstrate a simple addition. So first of all, we enter in the number we want to start with. In this case, let's do something um, fairly simple. Let's say we put in 552. So that appears at the top here, 552. I'm going to turn the handle once to put this down here. Now to make sure it appears at the end here, I'm going to move the carriage to the far left. So it appears here. Once I've done that, I turn the handle and you'll see that it comes down here, 552 in the results window. Over here it's telling me I've rotated once. I can then change this to another number, so let's say that I want to then add on to that 500, 232. 232 onto 552. As I turn the handle, clockwise, it then gives me the total here. So as an addition machine it's fantastic. Let's clear this and clear the register over here. Reset this. What if I want to do subtraction? Well first of all let's put a number in. Let's say that we want to go for um, one thousand, no, 3,550. So 3,550. So I'm going to put that in to the result. There it is there. I then dial into the settings register what I want to take away. Let's say we want to take uh, one, uh, 1,500. So I want to take 1,500 from this 3,550. With the crank, you don't turn it clockwise you turn it anti-clockwise so I pull this out and I'm going to pull it out so it then goes anti-clockwise and you'll see it comes up with 2050 
Now one thing to remember about these mechanical devices, if ever it locks up, which can occur, don't force the handle because you're likely to break things. All you need to do is just to shake the handle a little bit, check these numbers are dialed in. One of the most common faults on these is because when people dial these numbers in, they don't click into place. What happens is that they're kind of slightly off the number and you can see that in the register up here. So always make sure you've got it sitting neat in the little click. They do click as you turn these around. Also make sure the carriage is free to move and that will normally free up the handle but if ever you find that the crank handle doesn't turn don't force it around. So let's do uh, a multiplication. Now of course multiplication is just multiple additions. So for example if I put in 300 up here, if I turn the handle three times I've got the counter which says 3 times 300 is 900. So we could do that. But if it was a much higher number like 25 I don't want to turn the handle 25 times. It's a little bit tedious. So let's just reset everything. So I want to do this 25 times for 300. What you do is we do the from the 25 we do the 5 part first of all to put in here. So I'm going to turn it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I lose count it always tells me over here. I'm then going to move the carriage one to the right so that I'm in the tens unit here and do two times one two. 25 times 300 is 7500. One of the most um, amazing things about these devices is the fact you can do division on these almost seems impossible but it can be done and to do this let's just reset everything because with a division you might have many decimal places so what we'll do is we'll do a calculation to give you an idea how you can do it on most of these mechanical machines I want to start off with a number that I want to divide for, but I have to move the carriage and I'm going to move it so my pointer over here is pointing to position 8. Now the reason I'm going to 8 is because it gives me many decimal places here. So fractions. So I'm moving to 8. You might find that you can go on to 10, 12 if you've got a much bigger register. But I'm going to start on 8. I then need to put in my number that I'm going to start with. So let's do um, starting at the 6 position. So you always start on number 6 position. So I'm going to put in a number of 5,345 point seven three now I'm going to move there this is a little decimal slider and I can slide it into the position of where the decimal place is so it's just here so we got five thousand three hundred and forty five point seven three now I need to get this into this area down here and so as per usual we're just going to rotate it clockwise once which puts that down here. Once it's down here I can move my decimal pointer down here. So I've got the result there. I want to reset this counter. I want this back to zero and you'll see why because when you do division on these machines the result window is no longer here the result will appear over here so I've reset this I also need to reset 
the settings register because now I've got my number I now need to put in my divisor number which is 351 so again starting on the number 6 I'm going to put in 351 there's no decimal places but there's my decimal point there so because I've got a decimal here I'm going to put a decimal up here so it's in this position once I've set this you always subtract so I would turn the handle anti-clockwise so I'm going to turn this anti-clockwise until I hear a ring from the machine so let's pull this out and I'm then going to turn this Oh, just check my numbers are OK. Now you hear it ring, and that's because I've gone below zero here. So I'm going to go back one. So whenever you get the ring, you then go back clockwise. I've now got the first part of the result in. I can now move one to the left. And I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to subtract until I hear the ring. Now you can hear I've heard the ring, so I'm going to go forward one, move to the left, subtract, go back one, move across. back again and you'll notice I've got zero remaining from my original number I've got zero remaining so I don't need to do any more there's my result now a lot of people get confused about the decimal place where's a decimal place well it's quite simple down here you'll see that my decimal place was in front of the nine in other words I had nine decimal places here to the right of the point nine if I compare it to up here I had three so I subtract three decimal places from the nine which gives me six I can then move this little slider so that it's got six decimal places here and there's my result it says 15.23 And that's how you do your calculations on here. It is all about setting up your numbers up here and turning the crank clockwise for addition and anti-clockwise for subtraction. On here you'll have several levers and some of these machines will have them on this side and on the left hand side to clear the registers and they all work basically the same. So I can clear this one and clear this one. This one's also got the carriage arm lever here that I can move left and right. Now one good thing about this particular model, not all models have this and this is ingenious. Watch closely. Let's clear that. Let me put do a simple calculation. Let's just put a few numbers in and I'm going to just do a couple of additions and I've got this number down here 10,600. Now I'm going to clear this. It's possible to transfer this up to here. It's called a back transfer. If you can find a model that includes this then get that model it's superb the way it works remember there's no electronics this is all done mechanically now all of the models that you will have will work in a similar way you have to hold several levers and pull things certainly on the older models for this one this red lever here I need to pull towards myself it's actually locked to stop you from doing it by mistake the way I release that is just to clear this and then that allows me to pull this lever towards me and then I can pull the clear for the register when I clear this it's going to transfer this up to here watch these and these as I pull this and there it is there 
10600 has been transferred it's moved all of the levers at the same time it's a fantastic mechanism if you can get a machine that's got that not all of them have the back transfer on there but that is a mechanical calculator these actually go back to the 1900s and they kept the same design almost identical for all makes and models throughout the world for many many years 60 70 years most of these died out in the 70s because of course that's when the electronic calculator came in in the early days and so these kind of became redundant but you can still pick these up if you can they're just great museum pieces uh, they're not expensive they can vary from just a few pounds up to just a couple of hundred pounds depending on the rarity and, the, and whether or not it works. If you are going to buy one second hand, you want to test everything works. You do want to test that the crank can be turned round freely and that whatever you punch in here gets transferred here, the counter works, and also check the reset levers on here and that the carriage can move left or right. Now there is a calculation that engineers used to do to test that the cogs weren't missing any sprockets from them uh, and you can do this and what you would set up here is if we set this up to the far left zero everything and the engineers test was to put in nine seven six five four three two and one okay so you got one two three four five six seven and then nine the engineers would put this in and they would then multiply it by nine so we can just turn the handle nine times if there's no damage to the sprockets we should get a result of all the ones so let's do this one two three four five six seven eight nine and there you can see it showing all the ones which tells me this is a pretty good machine.